Okay, everybody, uh, good evening and welcome to our webinar. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, you're all very welcome to the first webinar in the Wexford Coaching and Games uh, series, which is in association with our main sponsor, Zurich. Um, my name is Ray Harris. I'm the Games Development Manager in Wexford. Um, I suppose for today, we're adapting to a new way of learning, um, a new way of coach developing and, and sharing ideas and learning. Um, so bear with us today. It's the first one in our series. There, if there's any technical issues, just bear with us, we, we'll get it right. Um, looking forward to this tonight. Um, yeah, so basically the, this webinar is it's, it's on an area that's a huge priority in Wexford. We really do focus on having an active start, an active nursery, uh, age appropriate skills, aim, aim that really, I suppose, helping the GA become the first love for all these kids. Um, with me tonight is Al Monaghan, who's a Games Promotion Officer in Wexford. Al is going to take the lead for most of um, in support of Al, we have another Games Promotion Officer in James Donahue. And on the technical side of things, we have one of our performance GDAs, which is Derek Hassan. So together with myself, we'll pop in and everything, but Al will be taking the lead on it. That was great experience when it comes to this area. Um, so just to let everyone know, we are recording it tonight. Um, if there's any issue with that, let me know. Um, it's for ourselves. I, the video will be sent to everybody at the end of this uh, over the next couple of days. Um, we'll also be looking to do a question and answer towards the end, the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, please use the text box and um, write up your questions and we get to you hopefully at the end um, or anything throughout. Just throw it in the text box and we, we keep an eye on it. Um, in the meanwhile, can everyone please make sure that your cameras are turned off and you're, you're, um, you're also on mute. I'll be I, on. Hold on. But anyone with a camera or has a microphone open, it's muted now. Yeah. And yeah, I'm going to pass you over to Al now and we get going. And look forward to the all throughout. Okay, guys, there's the first technical uh, issue tonight. So I'm chatting away here and we're on mute. Uh, so it just, it just goes to show I am totally 100% out of my comfort zone sitting here in front of a monitor. Um, uh, how I kind of excel in, in, in my coaching style is very uh, personal, uh, getting on, on the pitch, meeting people, and, uh, and and that's how interaction is a massive thing for me. Um, I suppose we're, we're lucky enough down in Wexford that we have a team of full-time staff, GPOs, GDAs, and every one of us kind of has a different niche which is great because we're, we're all able to help. Like even tonight we have myself, James, Dara and Ray. This wouldn't have been able to happen without an input from the four of us. So for me, I'm totally passionate about uh, developing fundamental movements and motor skills in kids. Um, I, it's what I do. I love, I love it. And I'm lucky enough that it, it's my job. There's not too many people can say that what they work at, they love doing. So it's brilliant. And I hope that comes across in the presentation. Uh, so, before we even start, I, I, I look at I, I totally guess how uh, how Ryan Tuberty feels at the moment when when he's uh, doing the late late show and there's and there's no one in the audience. It, it is a weird uh, and new experience, and, and, and unfortunately for the way things are going at the moment, we're, we're it's, it's the best we can do for now. But look, it's getting yourself out out of your comfort zone is not a bad thing, um, and to sure, look at we'll we'll crack on. So. I hope you enjoy the presentation. I hope everyone takes something out of us. Um, there will be a little bit of interaction along the way, so pay attention. Um, and there'll be at a couple of times I'll ask Ray to handpick uh, a coach maybe and turn your mic on and, and we get a bit of feedback. Uh, I'm just looking at the at the names coming in there. Liz Freeman and Albert, how are you getting on? Richie Flynn, how are you doing, Rich? Uh, so without further ado then, let's crack on. Okay, Dara. Okay, so when I was given the topic of what a nursery is and how to plan a nursery, the, these are these are the eight uh, areas that I feel need to be addressed. Okay, so, some people will agree and disagree. That that's cool. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to provoke the thought process. Okay, so they're, they're under the following headings: What's a nursery? Getting started. Coach recruitment. Expectations. Planning and communication layout, sample session, uh, games, portfolio, and resources. Okay, so to look at, before we get any further, can, can I just get, if you just drop into the text box, if you can give me a thumbs up, um, if everybody's sitting back comfortable and you can hear me and everything is going okay. 
So Ray is going to be in charge of the text box for me. Ray, are we getting any messages? Yeah, I'll leave a couple of thumbs up there. All right, yeah, just keep them coming in, lads. But this looks Perfect. to be good. So good, good to have you all sitting back and relaxed. So what I want you to do straight away, guys, is I've been sitting in front of this computer for the last six hours, um, and I'm sure most of you guys, if anyone working from home, is the same. What I want you to do is bear with me for a minute, right? Just jump up out of your seat. Okay. First thing I want you to do is I call this one the monkey shuffle. So make like a monkey. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to get used to turn your cameras on. So I'm going to have to trust that you're doing it. Okay. Uh, the next one that we're going to do is we're going to do what I call the flamingo. So up on one leg, bend out in front, and onto the other leg, bend out in front. And the last one, any nursery coach worth his salt or her salt has to know this one because at some stage in your nursery career, you will be asked to perform the floss. So I want you to give the floss. If, like me, you're not 100% at it, it's okay. Just give it a shot. Kids, kids will make that bond with you and you'll start building rapport once they see that you don't take yourself too seriously. Okay, so... Back to the slideshow. Dara, flick around there for me, please, will you? Okay, so this is this is uh, what we in Wexford GAA, this is our, I suppose, definition um, of, of what a nursery is. So a nursery is a safe and fun environment where kids come to learn and develop the fundamental movements and physical literacy skills required to play the game and lead a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so develop the fundamental movements and physical literacy skills. So... Look, it's like this, you go to school to learn your literacy skills, you go ahead to learn how to read and write. So we feel that a nursery is a place with a safe environment, somewhere that kids will feel at ease, uh, not afraid to make a mistake, and come to learn and develop how to use their bodies correctly. At no stage in that sentence is stick on a helmet, put a hurl in the hand straight away, start throwing skills into them, because we believe that a nursery is not for that. And that's why we have a... Uh, categorizes an active start okay because that's all we're doing is creating an active start and giving the building blocks for them to work with okay so what else is a nursery right it's a conveyor belt for both players and coaches so every year my job is a games promotion officer so my job into part of it is to is to get more players into the club okay so how do we get players into the club the nursery is an absolute no-brainer get as many players into the nursery as you can but that can lead to problems too because the more players you have, the more coaches you need, okay? So if you have a, a nursery, that, a nursery that's, that's working well, the players will come, and if you can get the parents involved, the coaches will come with it, okay? So age four, four and a half to six, uh, boys and girls, at this age, uh, psychologically and physically, there's no main difference between boys and girls, so it's a great way to get both of them together, and you're increasing numbers in the boys and girls side of the club. It is the first taste of club life, right? This is a, this is one that we hold here, down here in Wexford, right? Um, research has proven that if the child's initial introduction to the sport is positive, it will lead to a lifelong involvement, okay? So that's a powerful statement. So your, your first impression, if they get a good first impression of your club, and what we like to say is if you can create a grow for your club, okay, a love of the club, it will last a lifetime. And that's what we want. We want our kids to stay and play, have a, a long, healthy playing career, and then at the end of it, to give something back to the club, okay? And then on the bottom there, we have child and parent activities to enhance the experience, right? So just have plan to have the kids and the parents involved, and it improves the experience for both. Okay, Dara, last year on there. Okay, so how do we get started? Number one, get to know, get to know the parents in the area, get to know uh, what kids are coming up, uh, coming up along. So you'll, you'll have an idea of who to approach. Do a little survey. See what, what day and what time suits, okay? So if there's, an, if there's a soccer academy on on a Friday evening, don't put it up against the soccer academy. 
if there's a rugby thing on, find a time and a day that suits everybody, where there's no competition and it becomes the GAA nursery slot. Okay? Advertise. Which, guys, all this, it's not rocket science. I didn't want to go down the technical end of things. I wanted to go to, through the, this is how I love learning. Um, keep it simple. It, it, nine times out of ten, it's the best way. So advertise. Flyers through the school, kind of a thing of the past now. Um, I know down here in Wexford, we have we have uh, an app called Aladdin, where the school can make contact with the parents. Um, if you have a good relationship with your school, you can get them to advertise through that. Social media from the club, an excellent form of, of communication. Um, word of mouth, which is perfect. And the last one there, which is a really super important one, is book your venue. So even before you start, make sure that you book your, your book your venue and that it is guaranteed. At this age, it is absolutely crucial for kids to have routine. So if the nursery's on on a Saturday morning, it's on every Saturday morning. The nurseries that tend to stop and start and start and stop, eventually stop. They just don't work. We try and we try and develop a nursery where it becomes part of your weekly schedule. It allows parents to plan for it and it allows kids the opportunity to look forward to their nursery on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, whatever the case may be. Okay, Dara, move her on. Okay, so we're going to get to the serious bit now. Oh, Jesus, hold on for one second. Lads, this is this is brilliant with live TV. I have someone ever coming in here. Hello. This is Muscles the monkey, okay? And Muscles, he said he wants to show you how strong he is. So over to you for a second. Up next first. Good man, Muscles. <laughs> Off you go to bed. Okay, guys. So in my time as a nursery coach, this, this has happened numerous times. Uh, first of all, they say in showbiz, don't work with kids or animals. Uh, and I kind of pulled that one off there because that's my little fella. Um, and obviously he's dressed as a monkey. I have spent time in uh, an Easter bunny costume, uh, a chicken costume, a dog, the monkey. And did I make a fool of myself? Absolutely. Was I uncomfortable? Of course I was. Did the kids love us? Absolutely. Right? So... The point we're trying to get across, and I hope the trend through the whole thing tonight will be that this is a totally child-based experience. The needs of the child have to come first before any egos or anything else. Um, and again, keeping it as fun as you can. Okay, so to the back to the serious stuff, right? So recruitment and education. Horrible words. People hate to hear them. But it's part it's part and parcel of getting your nursery started okay so what we did last year in wexford uh, and it worked really well uh, was as the gda and the gp the gpo that that's uh, our coaching officer our full-time staff we ran two nurseries one in the uh, workshops one in the north of the county one in the south of the county and um, we invited all the nursery coaches from any club didn't matter where you are to the one venue on the one night so we had one in the north, one in the south. It was a great way of bringing coaches together uh, to share experience, lack of it, uh, what works, what doesn't work, and then to utilize the experience and the knowledge from the GPOs and the GDAs. So for anybody who doesn't know what Taurus is, Taurus is an initiative um, that is rolled out through Leinster, okay? And it, and it goes a bit into really age-specific workshops. Um, I'm going to let James come in now in a minute and talk through that for you a little bit more uh, to explain for anyone outside of Leinster who's not familiar with it, okay? So I'll plow on and then I'll let James talk at the end. So from my experience last year, I was a GPO up in, up in Gorey and we had a tourist workshop and at one of the tourist workshops, there was 30 odd coaches there. 12 of them were from a club I was with at the time called Cranford. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, after the, nurse, the nursery, which is an informal workshop, uh, we then could identify what, what we call it, a group of people, parents slash, slash coaches who were interested. The reason I know they were interested is because they went to the workshop. Um, the reason I knew they were really interested is because they stayed behind after the workshop, uh, formed a committee, and the Cranford nursery was born. 
which is fantastic. So that that's one part of it. The next part then is your guard event and your safeguarding your foundation. So the terrorist workshop is and then hopefully in July. Hello. Okay, hey, just remind you, keep your keep your microphones turned off, please. Okay, so the terrorist workshop is a, is a an informal workshop. Okay, which is great, which will lead you down to point three. Any any coach who wants to coach in Ireland, uh, by law of the country and coach in Ireland must be guarded, vetted, and safeguarded. Okay, so your safeguarding, if you've done your nursery informal workshop, the safeguarding is a formal workshop and it's a good step to gear you towards it. Okay, so if you have the two of those, the next step on then is your foundation. The joy of the nursery is when the activities are parent and child based, it allows you to be to be involved as you're with your own child. But again, guard vetting and safeguarding are a must with a lead on to the, the foundation. Um, utilize your GPO and your GDA. So for any county who doesn't who don't have GPOs or GDAs, so your a GPO is a games promotion officer, a GDA is a games development administration straighter. Um, so it's the full time staff. We run the we run the workshops. Uh, only too happy to get clubs ringing in and asking us to come out and deliver. It means there's an interest. Anytime there's an interest, you must be doing something right. Um, for the clubs who do have a GPO and are familiar with the process. Uh, I think they'll back me on this one and saying the the club school link is is absolutely crucial for the development of the club. Um, I I coach in six different schools, five different schools a week, um, and again the routine for the child is, is massive at this age. So they get to see me twice uh, once a week in the school and once a week in the nursery. So that's two connections during the week that build on the rapport and the routine. Okay, which enhances their experience when they come to nursery. Another thing is if you don't have, if you haven't got a GPO in your club and you're lucky enough to have a teacher in the school who is, is connected to the, G, the GAA or your club, get them involved, ask them to help you out and create that link between the school and the club. Okay, so I'm just going to hand you over to James for a minute and he's going to talk you through what uh, the whole Taurus uh is about okay james you there thanks Al. can you hear me okay yeah perfect perfect look guys i i won't keep you too long on tourist but just most of you will be familiar with it some of you won't be so just quickly what what tourist is essentially tourist is a, a resource which can be used by any coach of any age group all the way up to under 17 right down to nursery and i suppose why is tourist important be the reason you're here is uh, every age group has different needs. So if we look at the nursery age group, they have more specific needs than the age group above them, the under six, under sevens. So what Taurus is, is a resource informing you what, what you should be doing or what you could be doing with your own age group to make it relevant. There's four areas which the resource itself focuses on. The coach, what, what kind of coach you need to be with your specific age group, the player itself, what to expect from the actual player, the game, what, what way should the, should the child be playing the game, and then the environment which you put in place for the actual player. Um, there's resources cards like this going around. There's also the workshops, which Al has already talked about. If you want to know more about if if you are from a club in Wexford in particular or Leinster and you haven't heard about Taurus before and you want to know more about it, just just contact your your GPO or your relevant coaching office. Essentially, just to sum, summarize, it it is a player pathway, so it's known exactly what to do with your own age group. Um, I don't have children or anything like that, so. I found a player pathway when it came to the nursery very useful because obviously there's there's coaching and then there's managing eight or nine, six or six, five or six year olds and it's a completely different kettle of fish. But I will be going through some of the games that you can play with those kids soon enough. Thanks, Al. Lovely. Well done, James. Okay, Dara, flick her on there for me, please. Okay, so following on from James then, right, the expect uh, expectations, right? So you have your expectations versus reality. 
So if you look on the graphic there, I have lashed up uh, a picture of what the Taurus card is, right? Which you'll get through the Taurus workshop. And basically it's it's tips and guidance, very much similar to what we have here tonight. Um, but as James said, the key to it is it's all age specific. Okay. So when, when we're talking about a nursery, uh, certain things that you expect from the coach. Okay. So the coach, it ha the coach has to bring fun. Absolutely, the our paramount that the nursery is a fun environment where kids enjoy it. You need lots of variety. You need to be organized. You have to have a plan, and you have to be prepared to upskill yourself. Okay, plateauing is when you just plod along, um, and if you get stuck in a rut, as I said to you earlier on tonight, I I'm totally out of my comfort zone doing this. But as, as we go through it, it's actually not too bad. So the more you push yourself and step outside your comfort zone, the, the better you're going to be. Uh, next of all, then, is the player. So what do you expect? What can you expect from the player at this stage? At this age? So you're talking four, four and a half. Um, the first thing is, again, they're, they're looking for fun. They're not looking for to learn skills and drills. They want to have a fun experience where they can enjoy it. Um, at this age, kids are very self-centered. It, it it's a very intrinsic age where... You know what I'm saying? There's no I in team. Well, at this age, there's no team. It's all I. So you, you have to take that into account. Okay? Um, so have loads of equipment so that they mightn't have to share at the start. And everyone will have a ball or everyone will have uh, a cone or whatever whatever the activity may be. Um, also, uh, psychologically and physically, there's no difference between boys and girls. So you lump them all in together and, and they'll learn and develop together at the same rate. Um, they have a very short atten uh, attention span. So this is where, as a coach, the expectations of your coach to be organized and to be planned. If you're not organized and planned, bear in mind that the, the attention span of a four-year-old is probably about 10 seconds. Um, if you don't know what's coming next, that will uh, re relate across to the kids and it will de de uh, detract from the experience. Okay. And then the last one, which is super, super important, is expect honesty. Kids at, at that age are brutally honest. Um, if something is going well, they'll tell you. And if it's not, they'll tell you too. Um, in my experience, there's, there's, there's two ways they'll tell you. Number one is verbally they'll tell you it's not good. They're not enjoying it. And the second one is with their feet. Okay, so they won't come back. So if, if you notice a, a decline in your attendance, uh, it might be worth a little bit of self-reflection on how the thing is going. Okay, so then the experience itself. Number one, top of the list again is fun, uh, and it, it's it's no coincidence that fun fun is the top on the forum because it has to be fun, and by fun we can mean it can mean enjoyable as well. Okay, so it has to be a safe place to come and learn and develop. And by safe, I don't mean health and safety issues where there's broken bottles or nails sticking out. It's a safe environment where kids can come, express themselves, make mistakes in the comfort and the knowledge that they're not going to be given out to. Um, they're allowed to express themselves. It's encouraged. Um, it also the routine, it must be constant. It has to be constant. If it's going to be on a Saturday, it's going to be every Saturday. Okay. Uh, lots of equipment to, to vary the games that you can play as well. And, that, and that's in the category of the experience. So for your activities then, um, again, top of the list is fun, Keeping, keep uh, the group small uh, to allow lots of touches and that will allow loads of opportunity for success, okay? And, and the biggie for me in this one, include mom and dad, okay? The more you include mom and dad, you're increasing the holistic experience both for mom and dad uh, and the child. So mm -hmm. also... You're getting your you're getting the foot in the door for for the recruitment for your new coaches. If mom and dad are enjoying the experience and are getting involved, well, you have a better chance of recruiting them for coaching too. Okay, Dara, shoot her on there. Now, okay, so I talked long and hard about the layout. Um, again, this this is what works for me and 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 for us down in Wexford. So it mightn't work for everyone. Uh, the joy of the, GP, the, of the GAA is uh, every club in, in Ireland and, uh, in, in fact, all over the world is completely different. Uh, even tonight, I'm glad to see there's people from New York, Hong Kong, um, 
Jesus, I, I'll be famous after it. But they're all, they're all tuning in. So what works in Wexford mightn't necessarily work any, you know, everywhere else. But again, all we're doing is, is we're, we're, we're trying to give you an insight into how we look at things. And hopefully you'll take bits and pieces out and it will improve the experience for your kids. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's not a Monaghan session that works. It, it's how much the kids enjoy it. OK, so for me, again, 45 minutes to an hour max. Plenty for, uh, for kids. I, I like to have them so that at the end of the session, they're wanting more. So not to go too long and, and leave them with the hunger so they want to come back to you. Um, again, stations work for me. So I, I, would, I would design my, my nursery in six stations where you would rotate every eight to 10 minutes per station. Uh, keeping the group small. And if you have bibs to distinguish between the groups, all the better. It gives them a sense of identity and belonging. Um, and, and it's all, all, also easier to keep, keep an eye on them. Uh, vary the activities. So have, have a different activity in every station uh, and then I like to bring them together at the end and have one big game where you'll include mums, dads, grannies, granddads, whoever's coming to pick them up and have them all included at the end. Uh, the last one then Rota is, is, is a kind of a, I put it there and then it's sticking out and it's annoying me, maybe I shouldn't have put it in this one at all but I, I feel for, this one is related towards the coaches, rather than have the same coach at the same station every day, Rotate your coaches. If there's an area where a coach feels they're out of their comfort zone, or let them have a try at it. Um, the more different things you do, the more things you try, the more experience. You can't beat experience. So rotate, and that, and 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 that will enhance the, the experience for the kids as well when they when they see all the different coaches. Okay, Dara, pop her on. Okay, planning and communication. Uh, again. This is what I this is what I mean by planning. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can. Basically, what it is is a clipboard with a, with a with a blank page on it, and I draw a grid on it, mark it into six squares, and I write down a different activity in each grid, and I, I have an arrow pointing the direction that the games or the kids will travel between each station. So it doesn't have to be um, something done up on Canva uh, with super duper graphics. That's not how I work. Um, and again, it's up, it's up to yourself, whatever. Like I know if I was asking Dara, who's more technically gifted than I am, he would absolutely blow you out of the park with graphics and everything else. Would the message be the same? Absolutely. So whatever works for you, use it. Okay, find out what each coach is comfortable with. Um, for me, I started this about seven or eight years ago. Um, I went back to college and I did a, a, a VTOS coach with, uh, down in Wexford. Um, and the first thing I did was that we did a thing, a dance called the Agadoo. And it was kind of like my monkey thing earlier on where I was doing the ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and I got out of my comfort zone. Was I, was I comfortable doing it? Absolutely no way. So there are people who are made for doing it. There's people who grow into it. And there's people who are totally not comfortable with doing it. So you have to find out your strengths within your group, your core group of coaches. Um, there will be coaches who are totally at ease rolling around on the floor uh, having having a joke there are coaches who will absolutely not be comfortable with it but might be absolutely fantastic on the techie side of stuff or sending the texts or making sure that the bibs are allocated and the stuff is there on a Saturday morning and um, so you use each other's strengths work work with each other take a roll call this is something that I find is absolutely a fantastic way of breaking the ice. It's a great way of building rapport. If you have, if you have, it's a great way to meet of meeting parents at the door and the children and getting to know their names. And if you get to know the, if you get to know the kids' names again, it, it, it's introducing that personal touch to it. Also, it allows you to take a log of who's attending or on, on the downside if, if kids are stopping coming. It allows you then to focus on them and, and put a little bit more effort into them and find out what's wrong, get a bit of feedback, okay? So, and the last one then, ensure everybody knows their role before you rock up on a Saturday morning. So there's no point in having one coach who's done the session plan and everything absolutely brilliant and then on a Saturday morning arriving up and not having it shared and communicated with the other coaches. So I know what normally works for me is on a Thursday night or Wednesday or Thursday night, just stick it up and, and 
send it out to the, the coaches in the group. Everybody then has a chance to look at it and know what they're at. And when you arrive on Saturday morning, then everybody is hitting the ground running. Okay, Dara, on we go. Okay, so sample session. Remember I showed you this a second ago. I held it up to the camera, right? So if you look at the names of the games, uh, some of you might have heard of them before. Uh, a lot of them are just stuff that comes into my head or I see an idea somewhere and I take it and I tweak it and I think this could work. Uh, a lot of them do, a lot of them don't. So don't be afraid to try stuff and if it falls on its arse, sure, what about it? Um, so we have Cats and Mice, Pooper Scooper, Chariot Races, Snooker Loopy, Dot to Dot and Bounce with Dad and Mum. So this is just a sample session. And rather than me sitting here trying to talk you through the games, we ha I have a couple of little videos lined up um, and we're gonna, we're, they're 30 seconds each. Uh, we're gonna go through the games and I'm gonna ask a few questions at the end, possibly. So what I want you to do, while we're looking at the games, I want you to pay attention. In the text box, I want you to write down any of the fundamental movements you can identify from the videos, especially if they're repeated, okay? So I'm gonna ask Ray, Ray, you keep an eye on the texts coming in and I'll stop the video then and we might pick um, a, a victim or I mean a, a coach to turn on their mic and explain if they've written in a text, okay? Yeah. All right, before, sorry now, before you go, um, as I said, guys, um, keep an eye, type in the text box. This is an active start nursery. So any activity you see there that's keeping the kids active, be it running, jumping, whatever it is, type it into the text box and see how many you can come up with. Um, so we're going to, Dara's going to move on now to the video. Just be as active as you can in, in the text box, okay? Thank you. All right, Dara. Dara, there's no sound. Okay, guys, I'm going to talk you through it. So this one is cats and mice. Uh, basically, you, you took your bib into your, the back of your shorts and you have to get from one side to the other. Once you get back over to the dots, you're safe. The guy in the middle is the cat. He's the catcher. So the idea is make it from one side to the other. Next, we have a little progression where the, each, each mouse has a beanbag which represents a piece of cheese. So the mice are going to throw out the... Ah, oh, the video's gone on me. Okay, we'll just give it a second now and Dara will be back full steam ahead. Okay, so you can see they're throwing out the, the beanbags. I like to get them to throw it out underarm because you're actually early development of the hand pass movement. Now on the way out, you have to grab your piece of cheese and continue across and keep your tail as well. Okay, the next one then, this game is called Pooper Scooper. So each team has a, or each team has a yellow basket and a color-coded cone. So you have the orange, the red, the blue and the green. On the whistle, then I'll blow the I'll blow the whistle and they run out. You're only allowed to pick up one ball at a time, and it must be color coded. So the reds can only pick up the reds, the greens can, and etc. Okay. Uh, if you had 30 kids, you'd have loads more baskets and loads more cones. Um, or else, three is the magic number. Have three in a group where they pass the cone over on the way back in. Okay. Perfect. Now, I'll give Dara a second to. Have a look at that, see can, see can he work on the sound for me. So, Ray, are you there? They're all deserting me now. Ray, pick a, pick a victim for me to have a chat with, will you please? Okay, can I can I pick someone then? Let me see. Richie Flynn, will you turn on your microphone for me? Yeah. How's things in Ratnor? Very good now, very good. And yourself? You're doing well. Good man. man, brilliant. The wonders of I modern... Think, I think right, right over there, you're probably safe enough for a while. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I was getting his money. Okay. <laughs> Richie, can you identify any fundamental movements... That were visible in yeah. the two games. 
my type up there was in, in the pooper scooper was was the squat from I mean from uh, kids wouldn't be called it a squat but lots of squatting down and, and bending bending to pick the ball up and bringing it back perfect absolutely brilliant now from 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 a trained coach's eye then so the technique when they were when they were scooping the ball up with the uh, with the cone and then carrying it back in uh, like that what what two skills would that replicate in the game of hurling yeah, it was your, your your progression onto the jab lift and the solo run. Absolutely perfect. Okay, Richie, thank you very much, pal. I knew I could rely on you. Bang off, my Sorry, friend. Al. Oh, I'm back there now. Um, there's a guy. I'm gonna ask Thomas Cronin to come in there if he can, if he can open his mic. He put a good bit of stuff into the into the chat. So Thomas, yeah. if you're there and you have a mic, would you come in and tell us a bit about yourself and your background? It's not possible. Hey there, Thomas. If it's not possible, we move on. Um, yes, we move on. If it's not possible, we'll just move on. If, if Thomas wants to come in, just send a message again. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so ju- just to just to go back on what Richie said there at the end, right? So the the movements very similar to the jab lift and the solo. Absolutely perfect, right? But we won't be worrying about the jab lifting the solo for probably another three or four years down the line. So imagine if we can do these games on a regular basis, the amount of times that the muscle memory will kick in, that you've done the technique. So when it comes to the time of learning the skills and it's age appropriate, we have done all the groundwork before in our nursery. So the thing that I'm trying to get across to you is even though the fun games and the activities might look like fun and that's what they're meant to be for the kids, the benefit to them for their f- development of their fundamental movements and their motor skills is phenomenal. Okay. Um, okay. So Dara, click around there for me then. See if we got a bit of sound this time. No. Okay. Snooker loopy is this one. So have a look on the, on the, the camera and we'll see the triangles similar to on the snooker table. And this one really simple. All you have to do Run out with your ball. Ready, boys? Three, two, one. Go. Squat down. Place the ball down. Back in for the next one. Okay. So, again, we have three brothers here. These are my three young lads. And the competition between them is as exactly as you'd expect from, from young lads. They're, the twins are 11 and Ben is 15. Um, has that froze for anybody else or is it just me? Yeah. No, it's it's froze for me as well. We'd have to start it again there, I'd say. There we go. Perfecto. So instead of instead of watching the activity, guys, what I want you to focus on is the fundamental movements. And again, the secret the secret to coaching for me is repetition without getting boring. So a couple of different games. A couple of different games where the same, the same movement, but in a different scenario. Okay, this one then is dot to dot. So we have a series of cones. No, this is uh, mum and dad bounce. Okay, so brilliant one for getting your uh, mum and dad a bit shy, don't have a sporting background involved. All you have to do is stand out, hold the ball, kids come out and make a challenging for them. So if you look, we're working off both sides that so are coming around from both sides, there's the direction, and we're changing it now, so we're going up for a high catch. Up we go. Super duper, now look at you, go to the other side, lads, good lads. This time, look, a little bit of an element of surprise. I think I even give it a yoop. And again, a very friendly way of getting a coach involved, or a parent involved, and really, really enhancing the experience for the kids. <coughs> Okay, and there's the last one, the big high catch for Benny. Okay, this one is called dot to dot. And again, a load of squatting and a load of hand-to-eye coordination. So for the first round, all you have to do, you see we have our two teams lined up behind the cones. Uh, first, first person in the line has to place the ball onto the next cone, then back in and high-five the next person, and on we go. Now, guys, there was, uh, there was audio with this video, but look at it, it's our first one. Um, and I think the boys are just loving putting me on the spot. So 
it's a pity that you can't hear the reaction of the boys because even at 11, 15, and the Anna Bjog in the pink T-shirt is my wife. She's 21. Uh, the screams and the hollers of enjoyment is brilliant. Um, okay. Are we are we froze altogether, Dara? No, we got on. We're going again. As you can see, the two boys on the lower end have uh, have mastered that one. So I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, doing a progression for each round rather than going through it. So the first time we had to move the ball from one to the other. So this time, what I want what I want them to do is to bounce the ball in between, and I would emphasize squat down nice and low, bounce the ball, and place it down gently. Next one then is we're going to do the opposite, so we're going to throw it up. Make sure that it doesn't go too much up past your eyes, uh, so you can keep an eye on it at all times. Next round then, we're going to call this one the little mouse around the house. So we're starting off in one hand, going around the back and putting it down with the other hand. So loads of touches left and right uh, and bilateral development. Next one then, the figure of eight, stretching out the hamstrings and the glutes. And again, loads of handling from both hands left and right. Uh, next one then up and a little bit of clap and on we go again this kind of game is, is really good because you are the master of the conditions and you can get as much out of it as you want again it will be dictated by the development of the group okay and 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 the skill level that they're at but again so far we've gone through six games and i haven't really mentioned um hordes and helmets uh, or, or sort of skills it, it, it is all fundamental movements um, and physical literacy skills. Okay, Dara, flick her on right, again. Sorry, I'll just come in here for a second there. We have a good question in the text box from James Rally. I think the name is, um, how would this work in a hurling background? Um, I think I go first, Al, if you don't mind. The, the point we're making here with the active start is that the skills we're working on are transferable. So it's not really, it's not sport specific. So the game doesn't really matter. It's kind of more building the athletic capacity of of the kids at this age. So not really game specific. You're still working on all the all the fundamentals for for Harlan. So the run and jump and throw and catch and coordination, that kind of things. And um, so for us, while it it will be Harlan specific, I suppose with a Harlan background, but the skills the, these skills are transferable to a lot of different sports. Would you agree with that, Al? Absolutely, hundred percent. And and that's why we call it an active start. And given the given the the, the child uh, an experience where they, where they can develop and understand how their body works, by the time it comes to specialize in particular skills or areas, they're at a, a, a vast advantage over kids who don't go to a nursery. Um, and again, I'm a, I'm a firm believer. Look, at, I, I work for Leinster GAA. I'm also I'm also the chairman of my local soccer club. I'm involved with. Um, a surfing club, uh, horse riding, and I am a firm believer of play as many sports as you can, be involved in as many sports, and take a little bit from everything. There, there is plenty, plenty of time to specialise further down the line. Um, but what we're what we're about in Wexford is is giving the kids those tools to develop and be the best that they can, and and just be confident in their body. And as much as a, as it is about the GAA and the club. We we're making a difference to them in their lives, and 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 that's the gift that you can give. So I hope James uh, that answers your your query. Okay. So what I have next is I have I have done a, a list of games. Right, call it the games portfolio. Again, look at the names. They're all kind of child friendly. Um, I do tend to try and come up with sort sort of wacky names to 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 get the interest going from the start and and. Like your use of language is paramount when you when you're talking to kids because you could talk about your ABCs and your RJTs and dynamic movement and agility and uh, your 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 interest from the kids would be would be nothing but if you can ask them to play a game of blow ball or beat the buzzer you have a better chance of getting it out of them so. Again, we have another video I hope the sound is on it if it's not I, you're going to be sick of hearing me talk Um Dara, give her a shot here and we we'll see how it goes. Okay, no sound again. Brilliant. 
Okay, this game is called Reaction Drop. Again, we have Anna as mum uh, standing in, and we have the two boys, one on a green disc, one on a re- on an orange disc. So there's four green balls and there's four red bo- or orange balls in the cone. Mum has gone, and the whistle is going to throw them up in the air, and all you have to do is run out, pick them up, and back in. And the first person back in who shouts zippity doo is the winner. Okay? Next one, then, is blow ball. So for this one, all you need is your cones. If you look at um, it's a kind of similar setup to dot to dot, and, and that's not by chance. I'll talk about that in a second. So you have a ping pong ball, each of them, and all they have to do is blow it from one end to the other, keeping inside your lane. Okay. Now, if you look at Ben here on the inside, Ben is 15. So he's he's working on the bear crawl. I'll come back to that. Next one is beat the buzzer. So again, all you have to do, mom is involved in this one. Look, kids are loving it. You can rest it on the baton. If it hits the child's body, you get a big eh. And then the next one is, it's a game called Botcha. So basically, it's, it's a target game. Okay, so you, you peg out the first one. So Ben has the green counters. Uh, Finn has the blue ones. And the yellow one is, is the target. Now, this can work with bean bags. It can work with whatever equipment you have yourself. I'm lucky enough to have that set. Um, so you're developing hand-to-eye coordination, a little bit of wrist action, uh, target, um, and again, a little bit of competition. Healthy enough. If you'll stop her there then, Dara, for a second. Okay, so these games, I specifically picked out these games because... I feel that they're games that the, that the parents can get involved in, right? And they're a bit of fun. And, and they're hitting lots and lots of the fundamental movements. So the, the one with the blow ball, as I said, the Ben was 15. He was doing the bear crawl, okay? So he was doing totally uh, all over body workout, upper body, lower body, controlling his respiratory system, um, a bit of coordination, and a bit of crack, okay? A four-year-old won't do that because they're not tuned to do it yet. So what you'll get is you'll get guys sliding on their bellies. You'll get guys pushing the ball along with their hands. You'll get guys sucking at the ball instead of blowing at it. But sure, what about it? That's 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 what they're meant to be doing. That's how they learn in a safe environment. Um, the reaction, the drop reaction again. It's another one where if a parent is a little bit standoffish, all you're asking them to do is hold a book of the balls and turn it upside down. The the value that the kids will get out of the fact that mom or dad is in control of the balls. Um, it's fantastic. And again, for that one, you're working on reactions, you're working on agility, you're working on evasion, you're working on hand-to-eye coordination, spatial awareness so you don't bump into the, the, the other kids. And all the kids are aware of is that they have to just run out and get the four balls. But again, further down the line, when all this stuff becomes relevant and we're, we're coaching evasion skills and we're coaching uh, the jab lift and the roll lift, They'll have the building blocks there because we have done so much work from nursery up. Um, is that someone jumping in? Okay. And again, like just just to sort of go back on James's point there, um, is it like how would you how would you adapt it for hurling? Like I I wouldn't see a big difference in in, in evasion skills for hurling and football at this level because all we're doing is we're giving them the basics. And then, look, you have plenty of time to perfect the art. Um, so, Dara, flick on there when we go on to the next one. Okay, so the next one then, this is a, what I call the introduction, the intro to the hurl, right? Basically, and James will be delighted with it, right? So we have the little hurls on the floor. And again, to decide which is the dominant hand, I would always say, All right, guys, I want your hands on your heads, your hips, your eyes, your ears, your nose. I'd always say, why did you put it on your nose if you had your hands on your ears? Throwing a bit of crack. And then just pick up the hurl. So I don't tell them which hand to pick it up with. They pick it up with their dominant hand. Okay. And again, this is one that I wouldn't use um, until maybe halfway through the year. Um, get the kids, get the kids get getting used to their bodies first. Um, and then we, we'll bring in the egg and spoon race, which is quite similar to the solo, where you're going in and out through the in and out through the cones. Again, we've a little bit of competition, which is always healthy. Uh, Loads of different progressions. So this time you'll watch the boys again. They're going to go in and out through the cones, come to the end, and we're flipping it over into the hand. I will. I, I when when you get the video sent out, the, the audio will probably be with it. Um, like I do tell, them, put the ball in, or put the beanbag in the next person's hand. If you watch Ben that time, he he went out without having the ball, the the 
being back on the hurl. That happens when competition comes into it. There was a little uh, flip the pancake. And again, throw it back in. Good catch that time. Loads of opportunities for success. Loads of chances to praise him. And pretty simple, pretty easy. Keep it simple, stupid. It's not rocket science. Okay? And again, the last one, then we just speeded it up a little bit. That's why we had to drop there. And I did say to him, sir, don't be worrying about it. Because I asked him to get out of their comfort zone. Okay? And back in we go. So next one, then, is the Rainbow Sandwich Cone game. An absolute mouthful, but a load of crack. Uh, you can see the two poles. Each team has a pole. So all you have to do, the first person in the team has to run out, pick up a cone. Back in. You're only allowed one at a time. Off we go, guys. Put the first one facing that way. And the next one goes on top to create the sandwich. And then that way and that way. And we keep going up. And all you have to do is keep going until you fill up the pole. Okay? Again, if you have 30 kids and you have five or six or ten of these poles, you can have loads of teams going at the same time. Again, if you divide it up into the small groups, uh, it. You're, it's a lot easier to manage it. Even with this one, I would do loads of conditions for different rounds where you have to match colours and so and so on. But again, loads of running in it, loads of accelerating, decelerating, hand-to-eye coordination, teamwork, um, a little bit of decision-making, and loads of crack. And even at the end of this one, I said to them, how did you get on with that one, lads? And they were like, <gasps> very good. So next one, then, the under and over... Uh, basically, a couple of lines of danger tape. This tape costs a tenner in a hardware shop. Absolutely fantastic. And what you do is you have one at a low level, the middle one at a higher level, and the outer one at a lower level. Uh, again, starting off, it can be done with just cones out, pick it up, and come back in. I have the boys using the little hurls and the bean bags as a progression from the intro to the hurl one, just to highlight the progression of it. So. Again, what I what I reiterate and I did say it in the video is the tape is lava. The kids love that kind of thing, so you don't touch the tape. So make sure you're jumping over it and ducking under it. And again, the fundamentals are there to be seen. Now this one, the video is a bit arse but you bear with me anyway. This one is called the balloon smash. So it's more or less volleyball, but with a balloon. So the balloon stays in the air longer. So it's giving them the target is sitting up there nice and long, giving them a better chance of hitting us. Uh, you can go underarm, overarm, but what we're doing is we're developing the full range of motion in the arm, okay? And again, it can be left and right. It doesn't make any difference, okay? And if you have six or eight kids in a group, just lengthen the length of the tape, and you can have two or three on either side. Uh, again, given loads and loads of opportunities to achieve success, okay? So with the cone game, Okay, loads, loads of opportunities to bring in conditions, as I said to you. So round one would be just out, get any random cone back in. Round two, we're going to make it a little bit harder. We're going to, we're going to make you think because the motor skills are, are part of this as well, right? It's not just coming down and, and working how your body works. We want to get you thinking and asking questions as well. So if you're if they're in teams, the second round will run out and the first person brings back in a blue cone. The second person must get the top half of the sandwich to match the bottom half. So you have to watch what your teammate is doing. So straight away, we're putting, bringing a little bit of teamwork into it. Um, then possibly for round three, we have two, two players going at the same time. So straight away, we're increasing the amount of people who are out picking up the cones. And each player must pick up the same color cone. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a little bit of spatial awareness. We're looking for uh, keep the heads up so you see what your partner is at. And then bring them back in the two, the, the, the two cones together. Um, okay, I'm really disappointed that the, the audio is not on this because it's not doing the, the video justice. But you look at what can we do, right? Uh, send her on then, Dara. Okay, la last couple of games then, right? So this one is balloon smash, balloon dash. Basically, reusing the red and white tape. I love to pick two or three activities using the same equipment. So we have the same the, the same tape and the, and the balloons. All you have to do is flick it up and back the balloon back in. Now, if you look at Finn at the top, he finished first because he carried the balloon halfway in. That's fair enough because that's what you're going to get at a nursery. You're going to get kids who are, if they can't bat it back in, they'll carry it in. So what about it? They're still getting 
they're still getting half the uh, the benefit of the of the the game, and the rest of it will come to them. There's no there's no big mad panic. And it's funny enough because I asked the boys and they said out of all the activities, that one was the hardest one. I thought it would have been the easiest. Okay, this one is the wall to cup. Again, starting off nice and simple, ping pong ball and a cup. We used the ping pong ball already, so we're reusing the equipment. Off the wall, let it bounce and then try and catch it in the cup. So off the ball, let it bounce. And the reason I let them have the bounce is that it stays in the air longer and they're able to keep an eye on the ball. Okay, if you look at Max that time, I asked him to switch hands. Okay, so he was catching with the left, his right hand the first time and the left hand the second time. Brilliant, so there's your little progression. And then progression three is going to come in now. Oh, hold on. I'm ahead of the posse. Yeah, they're going straight into the cup without the bounce. So they're taking the bounce out of it. So the more, the, the more adapting they're coming to it, the, the, I'm, I'm changing up the challenge, right? And then we're going to bring an external factor into it. So we're going to get someone else to throw the ball to them. Great chance to get mom and dad involved again, okay? You don't have to have much of a sporting background to be able to do this one, okay? But again, you're... you're absolutely uh, improving the experience for the guys and also for mom and dad. Now this one is a reaction game. I like to use this one uh, to finish off. So you'll have two lines. It's a great way to get the parents on one side and the kids on the other or mixing them up or whatever you want to do. Uh, so if you have 60 kids in your nursery, you'll have a line down the middle where you have them all together. So for me, I use the word banana a lot because I don't know, I have an affinity with monkeys. So, okay guys, on the word, I'm gonna say banana. So I'm telling them what to do, banana. And they grab it. Okay. Next one then. So again, you can you can bring in the conditions, hands on your head, hands on your shoulders, sitting on the floor, stand up, up on one leg. No, no, the other leg. Very good. I want you to spin around 360, shake hands with the person in front of you, say, How do you do? How do you do? Get the bean bag or banana. Okay. And the last one then, uh, I don't know why, but I, I always end up with animals and I think kids can really associate with them. So the last one I always have, okay, so what noise does a cow make? Moo. What noise does a sheep make? Bah. What noise does a lion make? Roar. What noise does a monkey make? Ooh, ooh, ooh. What does the monkey eat? And they pick it up. Okay. Now you can see Max is breaking his heart laughing because he's enjoying it. The one thing I will say to you, right, is, okay, Max and Finn, uh, on the left here are 11 year old twins uh, Anna is the wife in the pink and Ben is this, my other son here in, in the in the blue okay so for these guys I took loads of takes to get to get these right okay so some of the uh, some of the time the activities will be too hard for the kids or they feel that they can't do it a big thing that we have in Wexford and a big mantra that we all use is when a child says, I can't do it, we like to say, can you add yes until the end of it? So I cannot do it yet. And, and, and that's what we're all about in the nursery, providing the opportunity, providing uh, the facility where they can come make their mistakes and eventually, through repetition, achieve their goals. Okay. Another thing I will say is the progression in these, I have... I have speeded up all the activities to try and get as many progressions in as possible okay that's not going to work in the nursery because everyone develops at different rates so from for instance the one where you're throwing the ball against the wall you might get a couple of weeks of, of sessions out but depending on on the developmental rate of the kids but again what about it so we have we have a whole year and, and i firmly believe that a whole year should be spent on this just to develop the fundamental movements and the motor skills Okay, James Fli or Dara Flicker on there then, please. Okay, so your resources. Uh, James touched on them earlier on, right? So this guy, the tourist card. Every time you go to a tourist workshop, you win a prize. It's this fella. So no matter what age group you're with, the, the card correlates to that. It has helpful tips on the front and a few activities and stuff on the back. Okay, uh, Facebook and Twitter. We're, we're really lucky in Wexford, right? Um, our full-time staff in the coaching office, the GPOs and the GDAs, we're a really close bunch. Um, we're friends inside and outside of work. 
we share everything that works and that doesn't work. There's a healthy competition there between us to, to keep reinventing stuff and come up with new ideas. And we love to share it on Twitter and, fi- and Facebook. Uh, we, we have a saying that if it's not on Twitter, it never happened. Okay, so that's great, two great uh, resources for you. Leinster GA Learning Resource, right? So the Taurus is led, led by Leinster. Um, th- these webinars tonight, uh, it's an, an initiative that was uh, spearheaded from Leinster. Um, any of the, any of the coach ed uh, that you can go to avail of. Again, the Wexford GA website. All of our stuff is up there. Um, and again, just contact the coaching officer and we'll help you. But the big one for me is is the kids themselves. Okay. Um, again, the layout mightn't work for everybody. I've been at sessions where I've ran my session and I've looked over, and two or three kids are after taking out a bag of balls and they're over playing their own game in the corner. Okay, is that is that a success or a failure? It's an absolute massive success because the kids have getting a little bit of independence. They're doing their own thing. They're actually, in effect, coaching each other. Okay, so this is the kind of behavior, this is the kind of thinking that we're hoping to get um, out of our nursery. Okay, uh, Dara, flicker on. I think we're coming to the end. Okay, so listen, guys, I, I've spoken an awful lot more than I thought I was going to tonight because the audio didn't work on the videos. So when we're sending out the videos, um, we'll make sure that the, the audio comes with them. There's a bit more understanding with it. Listen, I was uh, taking a bit of back when, when Ray and the guys asked me to do this webinar because I thought, sure, sure, who in their right mind is going to listen to me talking for an hour about nursery? But then I thought, but well, sure, it's not about me, okay? And that's the, that. That is the, the that is the inspiration that I had for the webinar because the nursery is not about us. It is totally about the child's experience, and it is totally child-led. And and if we can park our egos outside and put on the best show for the kids, there is a time for being serious in your planning. Uh, and and once you get there, the fun starts. Okay, so look at, as I said, yeah, this this is how we operate. It, it it mightn't be for everyone. If everyone takes one or two little things out of this tonight, absolutely brilliant. If it's food for thought and it's making a question, or it's, it's making your question yourself, or in fact, if if it's compounding what you're doing in your club, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and again, I just want to say, we're if you want any help, just feel free to contact us here in the coaching office. Okay, so I'm going to hand you back to Ray now. If there's any questions. Before we start or head off, yeah, I have a couple of questions in there. Um, am I maybe echoey there? Am I okay? No, you're okay. Good. Uh, now we have a few questions in here. Um, so I keep firing them in, lads, and we get them if we can. All right. So I think the first one I saw from earlier on was a guy from Tig. I think it's Brendan or Brennigan. I can't see his second name, but um, so. Um, so t- any thoughts, Alan, on, on how we get the parents involved, whether they have a background in GA or, or whether, they, whether they don't? I think um, it's the million dollar question, but uh, for, for me, I, I, I won't take over from you, I, I'll pass on to you now in a second, but for me, with the experience I'd have in this area would be, you know, showing them that there's nothing to be afraid of is a big help. Um, with Traditionally, nurseries could be mixed up with under six and under seven training where the first thing that happens is a helmet goes on and a heart goes in the hand or they're given a football with gum shields and that then straight away turns to, to hurling a football. So uh, training, whereas this nursery is an, is an active nursery. It's, it's, it's a proper run nursery and it's the easiest coaching you'll ever do. It's the funnest coaching you'll ever do. I think getting that message across will help a lot and, and showing the parents that there's nothing to be scared of. I think developing some, some kind of a community, making it feel like a community that, you know, that all the parents are, are more than welcome and are, are basically, we, we long for parents to get involved. So making them feel welcome and making them feel like they're, they're part of something special is, is a huge help. Um, if you want to add to that, Al? No, I agree a hundred percent, Ray. And I think um, it's it's kind of that the, the, you hit the nail on the head. Where it's it's not a, it's not a training session. It, it the nursery is completely different to a training session. It is a fun experience to create a grow for the club. And I, I hope that question came in earlier on in the night because yeah. I, I would have hoped that the videos and even my little bit of talking over them, there's ample opportunities to get the parents involved. Even we're the one where he's holding the football or throwing the bucket up in the air or pulling the hula hoop. And the thing about it is I know from me personally, when I started, 
I hadn't a great knowledge um, when I started, but I had, which was 15 years ago, but I had a kid and uh, I wanted to be involved and I wanted to be part of it. I didn't want to just go down and be dad standing on the sideline. So eventually I sort of scuttered my way in and, and look at one thing led to another. And, and I think that's the way, as long as you don't force stuff down people's necks, um, people, a lot of parents will not volunteer, but they won't turn you down if you ask them. And I think that's the way to go about it. Get as many people, and you said it is, we're, we're creating a community. We ourselves are, are, have a community of coaching, but the, 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 the parents are, have a community as well. And, and once, you, once you can create the, that sense of safety and like everything that we've said for the nursery, for the kids, applies to the parents as well. So create a space where you can get four or five mums and dads to come down and roll around and uh, without fear of lads on the sidelines saying, what are those idiots at when the kids are absolutely loving it? And I think if you go down with that attitude and that mindset, you're, you're on to a winner. Any, anyone else? Yeah, I have another question, another really useful one again from Owen. It's about noticing the children can't really run properly anymore. Um, you know, and again, again, is there any tips on that? Again, I'd start it off on a pass over if you don't mind. Um, kind of looking at the, it, it is a problem, and it's probably a, a problem I noticed that for me, it's it's a society problem. And when I when I was a young fella, not too long ago, um, <laughs> we were climbing trees and and jumping over ditches. We were out and about cycling bikes, whatever, whatever. We were into mischief probably more than anything, but we were out and about more than kids these days are. Um, and that's just a natural consequence of life. So if, if the movements are not naturally out there anymore, then I suppose we we have to artificially put them in. That comes from, that's exactly what the active nursery is about. So the movements that we do in the nursery, they used to be probably more natural in, for all of us, uh, in my generation anyway, a little bit older than me, a little bit younger than me too, but it seems to be gone from, from our society at the moment. Um, artificially putting them in, in the likes of... Uh, animal movements, high knees, marching, all those movements will help develop the running skills of, of children and they're easily done and it starts in the nursery. I think children now, and, and I see in schools, there's some children in the older age group, sixth class, first year, and they're going into secondary school and they don't have the fundamental movement skills to run. And it's probably because they didn't have the active start in life. Um, we'd be hoping in Wexford point of view anyway, that if we have every club in, in, in our county with an active nursery and an active start doing the right things that we'll be developing every child, whether they go on to play hurling and football or whatever they choose to do in life, that by the time they go to secondary school, they'd have those movement skills that would aid them for the rest of their life. So in terms of the games, I think Al kind of touched on all those games that Al touched on today uh, in the videos will help with that. Um, would you agree, Al? Absolutely. I, no, I think that, I, I can't add any more to that. I think you hit the nail, smack on. Good stuff. That's a nice compliment, Al. Um, Richie Flynn, I'm going to ask you to come in because you have two or three questions there and they're really relevant questions. So if you can open up your mic and we'll have a conversation about it before, if you can. Anyone else but Richie? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put Al on the spot, that's all. <laughs> in there, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, well, let's see now. The, the, the first one, I suppose, uh, Al, uh, I had... Flick back down along. It's introduced the hurl. Uh, is the first one. Yeah. What age? What age would you introduce a hurl, or, or depending on where you're from, a hurley? For me, it's a hurl anyway. But that's that's a different day's conversation. It's only a hurl. It's always going to be. Yeah. It's a hurl in Wexford anyway. Um, <laughs> as in, as in, not the small one that was in the. No, like uh, no, but the, the, the let's say the the hurl to the your hip or to the end of your wrist. Okay. I, Start bringing in that hat and then starting them me, early skills. For me, and it's only it's purely personal, okay. And it's only my opinion. The the, the first year, the active start of the nursery, the, the biggest I would use is the small hurl. All right, and it's just so solely to develop and give them an understanding of how, of how the body works. And then after that, for like you're talking so four and a half, five and a half, so under six. So an under six, or sorry, a six-year-old playing under seven, it would be that kind of that age. So yeah. Now put it this way: if the child was at home swinging the hurl, it wouldn't be taking out their hand either. I'd be encouraging it too. But the nursery is a, the active start nursery is a different kettle of fish, and and I think that's why it, it has been confused in the past with um, almost like a small hurling session. 
Yeah. 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 I, I come in there as well if you don't mind it. You see, a lot, a lot of kids in this age w- would have the hurl in their hand at home and uh, be with the parents. I'd imagine you, you, have a, you have a young boy and I'd say he's had the hurl in his hand since he's probably two. Um, probably swinging on a hurling ball, so it's it's kind. Of, some kids will come to your to your to your active start nursery, and they'll already have the skills. Some of them will be able to jab lift the ball, to be able to strike it. You know, um, a lot of that work comes from from the work at home, and I definitely don't want to discourage that. I I would encourage that if 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 you want your children yeah. to play hurling at home, absolutely go for it. I think in terms of the, of the active start, for us, it's more about the enjoyment and and keeping it coming back. I think a lot of kids at this age, if you put a helmet on their head and give them a hurl in their hand, and the first thing that happens is they get a whack of it of one of their friends, they're less likely to come back the next week. Whereas if they're doing the fun games and learning the movement skills, I think you keep them engaged for the year and build their love for the game, and they'll come back the year later. And that's what we hope to achieve with this. Yeah. Go on, then. Next one, Rich. <laughs> yeah, as I suppose, I've been involved in a couple of years, but. Um, Hopefully not that often it happens, but any advice on how to deal with, number one, I suppose, a difficult child maybe taking over the group, or number two, a difficult parent? Put me on the spot, sure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you an input on that one, Ray, or do you want me to? Uh, you go first on this one, Al, and I'll come in. <laughs> no, like, look, we, we work in school. Me and Al have worked in schools for a number of years now. And, um, you know, there, there's there's going to be children who don't take to your game. Um, the best thing you can do as Al said at this age group is keep them all as involved as much as possible. The more equipment, the better in that. Yeah. They don't like sharing. If they, have a, if they have a ball each, if you're doing some sort of game with a ball, mm-hmm. that's one each, a bib each. Keeping them engaged as best as you can is all you can do at this age, really. Questions and answer section now. Yeah. How are you, Willie? Willie Willie's coming in for the answer to that one, I think. <laughs> you coming in to answer that one, Willie? Uh, <laughs> He's gone like a shot. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Richie, like, you know, just the, all I can say, you plan as best you can to keep them as busy as possible so they don't really have time for, for to, I suppose, to be as difficult as you'd say. Um, keeping them busy and keeping them occupied is, is what I try to do on yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I'll concur with that, and I'll, I'll just add, I, I would definitely wouldn't um, single them out anyway. Um, I, I think to be fully inclusive, um, sometimes it actually, it, it's a cry, it, it's a bit of a cry for uh, attention. So make them the centre of attention for the game. Okay, so if Richie is acting the pup, um, so we're going to include Richie, and every time before we get to such and such, Richie has to touch the ball. Keep you uh, keep you engaged. Um, for me, with parents, um, yeah, over the years, I've probably came across one or two mammies who be giving out. Um, I remember when I started first, George O'Connor gave me one piece of advice. He said, "Al, if you're ever on the sideline and you see a mammy coming at you, he said, put your arms out as wide as you can and hug her as hard as you can." He said, <laughs> "Few mammies can resist a hug." Now, look, that's worked. That's worked a few times, but. I find if you can be as transparent as you can with parents, right, and you tell them, this is why we're doing stuff, you are going to get people who question your beliefs, right? Um, and I firmly believe, and I, I know the Emmy is, is of a similar mind to me, out with you guys, that you back your beliefs 100%. Okay, so, and if you at the start of the year have everybody on board and they understand why we're doing certain things um, and we're all on the one page, it kind of eliminates... Um, Elements further down the line, but uh, yeah. is that anyway good to you? No, oh, fair play, good stuff. Thanks, Amelia. Um, are you done? Uh, no, there's one other one actually, just about has this been rolled out? I suppose the guidelines, um, in the future in Wexford are county wide. Have, yeah, I'll come to that one. This is this is part of the grand plan, I suppose, Richie. It's kind of got scuppered now with the COVID 19, but. Certainly, part of our remit in Wexford is to have an active nursery in, in every club. It's something that we'd be heavily promoting and offering upskilling on to all clubs. And we'd hope they'd take it up and take it on board. And kind of, I suppose, move away a little bit from the under seven train, uh, Harlan train and treating that as their nursery and actually having a, a fundamental active start nursery for the four to five year olds. Um, so, yeah, it is something that we'd hope to roll out county wide. Thanks, lads. No better, Richie. Thanks. Um, Thomas Cronin got back and said that he's a Limerick man. Um, coach of six to eight year olds in Limerick, Al. Um, yeah. and he made a good suggestion for getting parents involved, coaching 
coaching officer within the club, if there's an active coaching officer in the club, get them to coach the parents and make them feel comfortable at the start of the year. I think that's a very useful tip as well. Yeah, and just, just, to, just to sort of compound that in Wexford, so any club who has um, the benefit of, a, of having a GPO, so the Games Promotion Officer, um, that would be one thing, and that's would, which would uh, correspond with our with our tourist nurseries. Like anyone who has a GPO who's lucky enough to have it, utilize your GPO to get your nursery up and running, to upskill your coaches. And the joy of having it like that is it's, it's all in house. So everyone, it's a nice, relaxed, comfortable setting. Everyone knows each other, and and you know use use them when they're there. Okay, but ultimately the one thing I will say about the GPO, and I'm glad it's actually triggered it, is don't make your nursery totally dependent on the GPO. Okay, utilize them to get it up and running and starting, but then it has to be organic from the club. It has to be nurtured and grown from the club uh, by the people of the club for the people of the parish. Okay, and um, right before Richie goes, I just like to say, guys, Richie, uh, I know Richie out in Ratnior there, and they have a fantastic nursery out there called the Busy Bees. And anybody who wants to check out how uh, a nursery should be run, completely different layout to the one I was talking about tonight, but that's the, that's the difference. Um, it's not going to work for everyone, but they're still very successful. Um, I'll be shot if I don't give a shout out to me on uh, two clubs that I'm GPO for, the Harriers and Kilmore. Okay. Um, so guys, thanks for tuning in for me tonight. Ray, back to you then to wrap it up, I suppose. Yeah, we have a couple more questions, Al. Um, this is a good one. I'll pass over to you straight away as well. Is how do you keep kids who are a little bit more or a lot more advanced inter interested? Um, for me, it's kind of the progressions and the re regressions of the exercises, but I'll pass over to you on that one. And that's from Enda Halpin. <coughs> Enda, how are you doing? Good one. Um, so remember I mentioned earlier on for the roll call at the start, the roll call gives you an opportunity to uh, hand out the bibs as the kids are coming in, right? So after a week or two or whatever length of time it takes, where you notice that there's a certain, just say if you had six or seven guys who are a little bit stronger than the others, that allows you then at the start to group those guys together, okay? They can still do the same activities as all the rest of the kids are doing, but as Ray said, you can tweak up the, you can either tweak up the intensity, you can change the rules up a little bit just to keep them challenged. And then, as I said, you bring them all back together at the end for the inclusive bit. But it definitely, I wouldn't see an issue in group and similar abilities together. And what about, sorry, Thomas Cronin, oh. what about moving them kids up to an older age group, the age group above them, if they're that advanced? We find that a bit that we, we always, there's always three or four kids that we would move up because they're, they're kind of bored with the nursery. Yeah, I'll come in there, Al, on that. Um, yeah. If you don't mind. So that Thomas was it? I can't remember. Yeah. Um for for me on that, and when you look at the tourist principles, there's kind of four or five different um I suppose areas that you'd look at with kids. So skill skill wise we won. Um so children generally get moved up in the ages if their skill is good. So they can strike the ball cleanly at under seven out of hand, they're gonna go up to under nines. But there's other areas like um maturation, are they are they while they are already physically strong enough to go up, while their skill level is there, they might not be physically strong enough. They might not have the mental capacity to deal with going up an age grade. They might not have the game awareness. There's four or five different different areas that you'd have to look at before I'd consider moving a child up. Are they competent okay. in all the areas or are they just really skillful? Um, think back to, I suppose, I could, I could think off the top of my head, several players who were very skillful and moved up through the years and because they're skillful and never quite made it at the top then, um, I'm not suggesting for me it's because they never developed the other areas, but I do believe that if you're going to be moving children up between the age grades, they should have more than just the skill required. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, or? no, that's a great point because I probably did just look at the skill level, maybe not all five of them, but maybe one or two of them, but yeah, look at the five aspects of it. It does make sense now, actually. Thank you very much. No bother. And thanks for joining us from, from the Piercing. In fairness, yeah. it's a great club down there. Yeah. No, fabulous presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I think we'll be one or two more. I think, um, Steve, uh, I go to, where is it? A yearly or monthly plan for sessions. Um, so you put up a session plan, or would you do up a monthly one or a yearly one? I think that's from Gavin over in London. Gavin, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, delighted that you tuned in. Um, look at 
for me, I have what I what I did tonight was I tried to get as look at just give you a snapshot of what goes on inside my head, right? Um, so there's 16 activities there, and if you use six per session, that's three sessions. Sorry, 18. That's three sessions. But if you change up and you don't use the same six each time, you could get five, six, seven different sessions out of using the same types of games. For me, I would go. I probably I. I personally, I go week to week, um, because it allows you then to like if if you don't have the same coaches every week, um, it, it allows you to plan a bit for that. Um, for for guys who would be more sort of into their planning, like the portfolio of games is there. Um, take like take as many as you as you can. They'll organically grow anyway because I guarantee you, I I perform a game on Monday night. And I go out on Tuesday night, do the exact same game, and and something will trigger from the kids, and we go in a different direction. So it it it's it's kind of like a bank of, of games that you, you can plan your sessions. The, it it will depend also on the rate of development of the kids, right? And I, I I'd be adamant about not forcing it and not and not trying to push them on before they're ready. But again, it comes down to your philosophy and your 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 own coaching style. Good stuff, Al. I think. And Gavin, if you're listening, I say you should still be there. Um, we we'll keep in touch, anyway, and we'll share over a few ideas, a few session plans that you'll have over in London. Um, just to send us an email on it. You can fly me over when this is all over, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Last last thing then I'd say is that it's the last thing Stephen Terrell put it in there about. Um, we'll be back playing this year. We'd hope so, Stephen. Anyway, um, you know we don't have the answer to that right now, but we are planning for it. Um. We're doing a lot of work behind the scenes that we're going to release to the club soon on session plans and and pathways and whatnot. But we do hope to be back in the field this year. Can't answer you to give you a definite answer for that, but we're all missing it and we are definitely planning for the day we are back in the field. So guys, we're going to leave it there. Um, for us, it's been very beneficial. Some really good feedback from from everyone in the group. Really good work and thank Al especially for a lot of work that he put into this presentation. I think he showed his skills exactly what they were. Al's really passionate man when it comes to this age group he's a top guy so Al thanks very much for sharing with everybody thanks to everyone who logged in tonight some huge numbers and uh, people from all over the world we've people from Australia from Asia from America from Donegal Limerick wherever you name it we're delighted to hear that and for us personally we're back next week we love sharing what we're doing in Wexford we're back next week with Willie Cleary and Anthony Masters on coaching children looking forward to that one as well I'd like to thank Dara on the technical side and James for coming in as well and thank you guys for participating. Okay, this is recorded. I'll send it out to everyone. Um, I have your email addresses, so I'll forward it on in the next couple of days, okay? Thanks, guys. Talk soon. Up Wexford. Up Wexford. <laughs>